This is Kardec Radio for Teens. Important life-changing events as seen through the Spiritist perspective. Now it's time for real-life dilemmas experienced by teens themselves. The Diaries of Belinda and Alex with Carol Correa. Hello, dear friends. We are honored to be here with you once again to discuss yet another important life dilemma with you under the light of our beautiful Spiritist philosophy. The dilemma that we would like to bring to your attention today is that of adoption. When you think of adoption, do you ever stop to think about how uh, the adopted baby that is brought to a new family may or may not be connected to them spiritually? Did you ever stop to consider whether or not the spiritual connection depend on the connection with the physical body? In other words, is our spiritual connection to our family also related to our blood connection to our family? Can we tell the two apart? Does spiritism tell the two apart? And if we have been adopted, how do we feel about being part of this brand new beautiful family that embraced us with all of their hearts. Do we feel spiritually connected to them? If you have ever asked yourself any of these questions, you and Belinda have a lot in common. So today we would like to share Belinda's actual questioning with you so you can experience together with her her very own dilemmas, and her emotional conflicts. And then after we share Belinda's actual words with you, we will also talk about the dilemma of spiritual versus uh, corporeal connection with you under the light of our beautiful gospel according to Spiritism and under the light of the books of the spirit André Luiz, psychographed by Chico Xavier. So, allow me now, dear friends, to share Belinda's own words with you. If you remember from our first episode, Belinda is a young adult, originally from Brazil, who lives in a community and is from a low socioeconomic status, and, most importantly, dreamed of becoming a medical doctor. As we discussed in our previous episode, uh, that dream was, in fact, part of her reincarnatory plan. Do you remember that? Now we will take this discussion one step further. Is being adopted or having the opportunity to become a member of a family who carries and accepts us from the heart also part of our reincarnatory plan? What do you think? Let's hear what Belinda thinks. Here's what she has to say. She says, Oh my goodness! Today, I officially became an undergraduate student. I cannot believe it. This is the very, very title I've dreamed about all my life. It's finally here. It's real. Can you believe it, dear diary? It's hard to believe, right? And to get there, you wouldn't believe. I had to take so many steps, I thought the steps would never end. I had to fill out so many forms to be able to choose my classes and officially enroll. I thought I would never make it. But you know what happened? As I was filling out all of those forms, a great dilemma that has been hunting me forever came back. Want to know what it is? It's actually the fact that I have been adopted. You know how that came about, dear diary? When I was filling out the forms to enroll in my classes officially as Dr. Belinda, one of the questions that was asked of me was the name and age and address and occupation of my parents. You know, 
the same old, same old, same old questions that they always ask of us. I mean, seriously, again? Like, they don't know that already. I mean, it's hard to believe. But there I went, once again, for the millionth time, telling them about my background. But you know what? When I started writing my parents' name, tears started rolling down my eyes. I mean, seriously, once again, the same old, same old question hunting me. Who are my parents? I mean, seriously, I really do love my mom and I really do love my dad. They went through so much to embrace me and take me literally home with them. I can't believe all that they went through. You know, my mom, she had already had three children, but my dad dreamed of a little girl. The problem was my mom couldn't have babies anymore, so they didn't know what to do. And then this one night, when my mom was talking to pregnant women, women who were expecting babies at the center, discussing about the joys and dilemmas of motherhood, this one young lady, she was only 15, I hear, decided to talk to my parents about the fact she was pregnant. But you know what her dilemma was? You remember, dear diary? Her dilemma was that she had gotten pregnant uh, from a drug dealer. And you know, obviously, the guy didn't live up to his own responsibility. And once she found out that she, the young lady was pregnant, he said, well, I don't want to have anything to do with that. Just forget it. So this young lady came to my mom and said, you know, I think I'm going to end a life with this baby. And that made my mom's heart sink. So my mom and dad, they worked really hard to convince the young lady to let that baby be born. And they proposed, you know, how about if you gave the baby up for adoption? So my beautiful parents, you know, dear diary, as always, they were so caring that the young lady decided to allow the baby to be born. But then she really didn't know who to give the child to. Lo and behold, the unbelievable happened. The unexpected happened. As you know, my dear diary, my dad and mom opened their hearts even more and decided to embrace the newborn child as their own. And guess who that baby was? Me, Dr. Belinda. So, of course, I love my parents and, of course, they deserve all of my respect. And, of course, I couldn't dream of having better parents. But that hunting question comes back to me again and again. Who am I really? How am I ever going to be able to answer that question? What, when I, what will happen to me when I have to feel one of those forms again? Will I have to live with this question in the back of my head for all my life? Oh dear diary, I don't know. I guess this is too difficult of a question to answer, right? So I guess I'll give you a break. I'll see you next time. Bye! So, dear listeners, how did you like Belinda's account? Pretty realistic, right? Could you feel her emotional dilemma? Yeah, it's interesting to notice her emotional conflict, right? She dearly loves her adopted parents. She sees no boundaries between her love, the love she feels for them, and the love they feel for her of course, but at the same time, it seems as though she really wanted to find that missing link, the missing link being the mother who actually just dated her, right? She wanted to know, it seems like to me from her very own words, if she was loved by that person. And speaking of love, Of course, our beautiful gospel, according to Spiritism, offer us uh, food for thought here. 
teachings that we can ponder upon when we face life-changing dilemmas such as this. Today, if I were talking to Belinda, and as I talk to you, I would like to invite all of us together, myself included, to ponder on a very special passage of our Gospel according to Spiritism, as codified by Allan Kardec. I would like to invite us all to go to chapter 14, entitled, Honor Your Mother and Your Father. And under the chapter, there is a small section called, Who is my mother? And who are my brothers? Have you ever stopped to read this particular section, my dear friends? If you haven't, this is very fitting for dilemmas within our families. And guess who is offering us a little bit of food for thought here? No one but our very own Master, our very sweet, loving Jesus. When he was entering a house to speak to a group of people like he kindly was, as you know, rather like he kindly did, as we all know he was a wonderful teacher, he was told by his own disciples that his family, his mother and brothers were outside to see him. Guess what his response was to that? He said, Who? is my mother, and who are my brothers? And a lot of the people who are gathering around him to listen to his beautiful teachings thought that that was a little bit crazy, meaning how come our Jesus, our master, doesn't know, doesn't recognize his mother and his brothers? How can that be? I confess to you, dear listener, that when I first read this passage for the first time, I was confused as well. How can that be that our very own master doesn't recognize his family? But then in thinking and reading more, I realized that Jesus was taking the opportunity to expand our thinking. So when he said, who is my mother and who are my brothers? He was inviting us to think of the concept of family from a spiritual point of view, teaching us that the family ties that we have today are temporary. They are bound to this incarnation, but that they may or may not continue after this incarnation comes to an end. What does that mean? That means that often we come back to the world, to the physical world, in a new body to start anew in the school of life, surrounded by the people who can teach us the most about our own very selves. So, for example, if one of our goals as a spirit is to practice patience, we'll be surrounded in our family circle by people, parents, siblings who may help us to put that virtue into practice. And the illuminated spirits through Kardec, when he was codifying the gospel in light of spiritist teachings, they explained that we often reincarnate with spirits who already love us or with spirits that we need to come to love. But either way, When we are put within a particular family circle, that is a planned decision, both on our part and on the part of the spirits who guide us, love us, and inspire us, and even help us, like we discussed last week, to plan our reincarnation. So let's go back to our original dilemma here, our question that we posed in the beginning of this episode was, when we are adopted, when we are invited to come into the heart of a new family because of the love of parents who are not biologically connected to us, are we connected to them spiritually? How do we know that? 
card deck helps us understand this question. So going back to the gospel, according to Spiritism, we now realize that the ties of the heart are independent of the ties of the body. Often the two go together within the circle of our family, but not necessarily. So according to the illuminated spirits, it is very likely that Belinda is connected spiritually to her adopted parents. And if we go even far, as far as to look into Andrea Louise's books, uh, psychographed by Chico Xavier, we will see that in the book, The Life Goes On, we see the case of two adopted children who were placed in a family uh, being cared for by elderly parents because the illuminated spirits who took care of that family circle wanted those two spirits to be directly delivered to that family so that they could learn to love one another beyond what they had been able to do in a previous reincarnation. So even though those two children who were given to them were not biologically related to them, when we read or see the movie Life Goes On, based on the book psychographed by Chico Xavier, and dictated by the spirit Andre Luis, we see a clear example that even when a child is adopted, the spiritual ties of love are always there. How beautiful is that, right? I love our spiritist doctrine because it allows us to understand our life dilemmas not only with the heart but also with the mind and we also come to understand that there is justice behind every action that is taken by divine providence if we take the time to understand our lives beyond the now beyond the present and we see ourselves as spirits who are reincarnated and who have reincarnated many times. And if we accept the fact that God is love, we then understand that every major turning point that we experience is also an act of love on the part of God. So even if the biological ties are temporarily missing between our parents and ourselves, we can now be more assured that the spiritual ties are always there and the spiritual ties prevail. If you guys are curious and if you want to understand the process of reincarnation and the process of establishing a reincarnatory plan, I also invite you, if you would like, to read the book Missionaries of Life also psychographed by our dear Chico Xavier and dictated by André Luis. In that book, we learn that there is a reincarnatory department in the spiritual realm. Can you believe that? It's like going to college or going to the university exclusively to learn to reincarnate. Isn't that cool? And specifically in that particular book, there's a whole chapter describing step by step how our physical bodies are designed according to the experiences, learning experiences that will most be beneficial to us, how we often study the profiles of our mother and father or those who will act as loving mothers and fathers to us to see if they can be the best teachers for us, spiritually speaking. We also agree to embrace our brothers and sisters and all of those who are part of our family circle. Is that an easy process? Yes, if we understand that reincarnation is meant to help us progress and that even the lessons that are most difficult provide learning opportunities for us. So we hope that you liked 
this excerpt from Belinda's story and we can't wait until next week to share even more with you. The particular dilemma which we will focus on next week will be rivalry amongst siblings. So if you're interested, tune in. We'll be looking forward to talking to you then. Thank you very much. We wish you all the blessings of God, of our beautiful Jesus, and of love and all of its wonderful expressions. See you next time. Thank you. This has been Kardec Radio for Teens. Thank you all for listening.